An energon cube! Megatron, spare me! Your death will provide me with the upper hand in this war. Megatron. Optimus. One shall stand, one shall fall. Trying to picture what happens next. Why would you do that when we made a live performance using our own custom-built robots? I'm Santosh. I'm Ethan. I'm Leonidas. I'm Kyla. I'm Venkatesh. We are all from Peihua Secondary School, Singapore. We each have participated in RoboCup since at least last year. This year, we are taking part in RoboCup Junior on stage. Green cheese. Our team has spent the past few months dedicating our time and sanity towards research and development of a state-of-the-art Optimus Prime and Bumblebee. Standing at about 210 centimeters, powered by a 7 RPM high-torque motor, two 200 RPM motors for movement, and more ultrasonic sensors than ACE our entire team had gotten for our exams, we present to you Optimus Prime, the leader of the Autobots. Standing at about less than 210 centimeters, Powered by a 20 RPM motor, 0 200 RPM motors for movement, and no ultrasonic sensors, we present to you Bumblebee. Wait, that's the wrong picture. We present to you Bumblebee. Optimus transforms by using a pulley system. Optimus consists of two different parts, the lower body, which contains the legs and the pelvis, while the upper body contains the chest and the arm. The upper and lower bodies are attached together using a hinge. Sir. That's a piece of plastic. Fine, a piece of plastic. This allows the body to bend up and down. This is similar to how the Gen 1 Optimus Prime toys transform. The lower body is then connected to the beam securely. This allows for Optimus to transform when the beam is moved upward by the motor. A rubber band pulls the head of Optimus Prime back using tensional force once the servo releases the head. The hands come out similarly. When all of these work together, it allows for Optimus to transform from looking like a truck to his robot form. Remember the part where Bumblebee gets shot in the story at the opening? No? Megatron, spare me! We also kinda made a bot for that too. Unlike Optimus, Bumblebee doesn't transform during the performance. Instead, he falls after being no-scoped by Megatron. Bumblebee also needs to get back up for the performance. Thus, we created another pulley system which pulls Bumblebee up to a standing position. However, this time on the rope, there is a loop which is tied around a servo. So when the servo is moved to a certain position, the loop is let go of and Bumblebee falls. The motor can then be activated to pull Bumblebee back up. With that, our robots are finished. Now that we had all the hardware, it was just a simple matter of programming them all. To begin with, Optimus and Bumblebee need their pulley motors to start pulling them. To achieve this, the pulley motors, called the lift motors in the code, needs to be lifted by writing to the motor controller, which will then allow us to activate the motor. For Optimus, we use an ultrasonic sensor to detect when to stop pulling the body. To move Optimus, we use another motor controller which controls the bottom two wheels. So, we can make a function like this that allows us to easily move Optimus in the desired direction. For Bumblebee, since we need to let go of the loop in the string attached to his body, we need to program a servo to do so like this. Back to Optimus, we need to make sure that he can punch and fight back. What, do you expect Optimus, the leader of the Autobots, to be some kind of potato? To detect Megatron in front of him, we have used three ultrasonic sensors at the base, two of which are angled. These can be used to detect if Megatron is on the left or right or directly in front to determine how to punch. Now you might have a few questions from the following exhaustive list. 1. Do you guys face any challenges? 2. Can your robots start war with each other for control over the world? 3. What happened to Megatron? We faced a few challenges. One of the biggest challenges we faced from the start of the project was delegating work. Since our team members each had different skill sets with varying levels of competency, 
We had to ensure everyone was doing work that they were either good at or liked doing. Another challenge we faced was figuring out how Optimus was going to transform. In the end, we decided to take inspiration from the Gen 1 Transformers toys as their transformations were simple and straightforward. Finally, Optimus kept on breaking as the pulley system was not secured firmly onto the base. This caused the entire pulley system to be ripped out of the base when we tested Optimus for the first time. This caused us to be behind schedule. To combat the lack of time, we carried Optimus back to one of our teammates' house with some help from our teacher. This allowed us to work on the project over the March holidays. Unfortunately, no. Instead of building a Megatron, we decided to use one of our teammates who had volunteered completely out of his own no, will. No, I don't want to be Megatron. We used AI tools like ChatGPT and Bing Image Creator during our project. ChatGPT helped us brainstorm ideas, write and debug our ESP32 code, and organize our work efficiently. We also used AI to improve our slides and visuals. Sometimes the AI gave complex answers, but we tested and simplified them for ourselves. Overall, AI helped us save time, learn faster, and work better together as a team. Thank you for watching. Share it with your friends and random people you find in your contacts. And leave a like whether you liked it or not.